Welcome to Most Famous, where we are not. And today I am joined by the one and only uh, Mark Caldwell, my dad, my pops. And before we get started on anything else, first, we gotta get you a Super Bowl pick. Because <laughs> it's coming pick. out on a Monday, so this is fresh off the Super Bowl. Oh, okay. This so is fresh, fresh and hot. So yeah, right, so. The original. All right. Um, I've thought a lot about this. Uh huh. <clears throat> I thought about this. Um, I'm going to go with. I've been saying Chiefs, so I'm going to say Chiefs. Chiefs? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say Chiefs. Yeah, they sent me the script uh, about a week ago. I asked for it, and they told me that Chiefs are going to win. Uh, 23, 28, and Patrick's going to throw for two touchdowns. Oh, okay. Rob Perry's going to throw for uh, two touchdowns, two picks, and I think the Chiefs going to win. But I really don't like it because he can't win. He can't have a down year and win again. I think the Chiefs win close. If it's a blowout, I think it'll be San Francisco. Uh -huh. That's hedging bets. So you want to make a pick, I'm going to say Chiefs. Yeah. Right? Um, I'm going to go with that, and I think that if they do win, it's going to be because um, Pacheco goes crazy. Yeah, I think so, too. That's what I think. And Travis, I think. Travis will have a TD, too. That's in the script as well. I think so. He had a TD. He had a, like, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. Yeah. I, I just think that if, if they're going to do what they need to do, they're going to have to run the ball and run the ball well. If they're yeah. going to have to. Otherwise, it can get interesting. Because yeah. if Frisco gets up, the Chiefs can't stop. It's going to get interesting. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's my pick, Chiefs. I'm not. I'm not putting money on it. Yeah, I stopped putting money on it because uh, of this. Uh, I'll take Chiefs. You take Chiefs. Yeah. And then, um, you have any like? Actually, let me tell you about the Tyra experience or the the previous interview, the one for this one. All right, go. So, it was it was a good interview, but I want to talk about before. So, okay. obviously, it's in Austin, so it's like two hour two hours and forty five minutes away. Yeah. And I actually got pulled over. Oh, you for the first time? Like yeah, I drove. Yeah, I drove there. I got put over. So it was like, yeah, oh my gosh, bro! It's like a long patch of grass, and this is a small town. And then I was going too fast. I was too close to a car, and I changed lanes without turning my signal on. And they pulled me over for that. And not gave, speeding, but that. No, nah, not. I wasn't speeding. Where were you? Were you in Austin? Or were you? In, were you on two ninety? Where were you? I was. I was like, I was in Austin. Like, if it was in my hood, it wouldn't happen. Oh, because you were they, in Austin. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah I was in Austin. Yeah. So I was awesome. Okay. okay. So Let's yeah, learn. that's all I got for you. I yeah, and you. then it was a really good interview. I liked it. They gave me a lot of advice. Um, I like how it came out, but like I graded it, and it was like a C plus. Like I can improve a lot, but um, editing was pretty good. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like I can't. I couldn't wait to do this second episode. Well, good. I'm proud of you. See, yeah. You upside, you feel good about it. Yeah, I, I feel okay about it. But uh, yeah, I mean, this thing's not as easy as I thought. I mean. But I'm not easy to thought, but I got a lot to improve, you know? Like, I feel like it's, like, only, like, 2%. Well, what it reps, right? They say you're going to be great at something. Usually they say 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. You know, but just, you keep getting reps, you'll get better. Yeah. You absolutely. realize it or not. It'll, yeah. it'll come easier. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I love it already. Like, I love editing and, and like, filming. It's, like, Christmas once a week. It's oh, this. wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah, once it's, a week. Okay. it's cool. It's cool. I like setting it up. I like editing. And then, well, as I told you before, I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. This this could be a good thing for you. Yeah, so. yeah I hope so. I hope so. It's going to be in the universe. I have some business questions, but I'll ask you, like, at the end, and I might like, put it at the end of the video. Okay. Yeah. This is, this but is anyway, good. all right, let's uh, get into it. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about fatherhood with my dad, and my dad's been a father for... How long? He's been, I know for sure he's been a father to at least seven kids. And, <laughs> and he just, he just had a kid just now. And he's uh, 49, big, almost 5-0. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not 49, dude, I'm 48. Why you put that 40, like that? 40. That's cold, man. 50, let's just you know. say, let's just come, let's like, let's Oh, so we just gonna skip to 50. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> You're not gonna put that on my jacket. So, man. growing up, I wanna. put five on my jacket. You know, like Doing that. So growing up, I wanted to know what is like your um like your earliest ideas of fatherhood. Like, who was a model there, and like, cause how did you? Wow. Okay. Good question. Honestly, um, growing up, truthfully, uh, I didn't have a great example from my own father. Uh huh. He was not there. So your grandfather in that situation, that was almost an exercise in what not to do. Right. In many cases, right. 
I remember us doing something maybe once or twice, throwing a ball twice. Um, and well, that's 18 years, right? Um, so there's that. So, I mean, you had the TV and stuff like that. Now, like, so with Cosby's and all of that, you know, that was things, but, um, wow. Um, actually your, your Nana did a lot to help mm-hmm. your grandmother, you know, she did a lot to help. Um, but only man can show a guy how to be a man. Right. So, um, sometimes as I say, it takes a village. It's not going to always be, you like what to be your father. That's mm-hmm. easy. That's low hanging fruit. That's how it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, if not your father, maybe your uncles, stuff like that. But for me, um, a lot of it was, you know, my godmother helped a lot. You know, you heard me talk about her a little bit and just put me around people, uh, around good Christians and people. Uh, I just, you know, I guess TV sometimes help you kind of have an idea of what you want, mm-hmm. you know, but you read a little bit, um, and, and you just kind of listen and learn. Like I said, I, I knew a lot of what I didn't want to want to be. Because yeah, exactly. of, you think that was like most of it? Cause most of it was like, I know you didn't grow up with my father and like, um, I mean, you know, they were, they, my father and my stepfather were around, but in their own ways, they didn't want to be around. Yeah. You know what I mean, they chose, because listen, man, father is a choice. Mm-hmm. Every day you wake up, it's a choice because animals make babies. Yeah, exactly. Right? And in many cases, they leave like it's nothing. They're gone. Right? Mm-hmm. They may, some of you watch the National Geographic sometimes, they'll have a baby or two or, or 10 Mm-hmm. And do to do his do his business. Yeah, and he's leave. gone. Right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm, I'm doing out. Right. So, unfortunately, there's a lot of that in society. So, father is a choice um, because anybody can be a daddy. It's just a donor. Exactly. Fatherhood is, is different. Um, so, so know, do you think it's possible that um, you can be a good father even if you didn't have the most perfect role model of a father? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you can. You can, because sometimes, what if what if you know what if your your father was an abuser? Mm-hmm. Right, or what if you grew up in a very toxic environment, you know, as your father, but maybe you may have had a pastor or an uncle, yeah, or a cousin, you know what I mean? Uh, someone that's older that could be a role model to hey, hey, this is kind of how we do things, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you know, thank God for people in life that can stand in the gap for you. Mm-hmm. My godmother stood in the gap for me in a lot of ways, um, even though she was female, you know, but you know, her, her brother in law, you know. I would talk about caught my first fish, right? So there are people that can stand in the gap to show you things and teach you things, right? Even if it's not, you know, it's not going to always be family. It could be a coach. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So Certainly. something like that. And sometimes it can be an example of, you know, you, you watch it with, and, and it's not a lot on TV, especially for us, mm-hmm. unfortunately, right? But, you know, what, what does a father look like? How does he act? It doesn't mean there's necessarily a manual, but you know, a lot of times... You know, it's, it's, and I'll give some sports analogies as we talk. A lot of times, if you watch sports, coaches in every sport, whether it's football or basketball, baseball, pick one, a lot of times I say you win games not by what you do, but more so what you don't do. Mm-hmm. Turnovers. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Things like that. So, you know, sometimes if you learn more or less, hey, here's what I don't do, you can kind of figure out what, you, you know, in the process of what you do. Like, well, I can get better at this, I can get better at that. Not that we have all the answers, um, but. You know, I knew I wanted to be a good father because, you know, it's kind of how I grew up, right? You know, kind of what I wanted to say, what I didn't want to say, or how I wanted to. It doesn't mean I'm perfect by any means, right? But I take pride in the fact of, of wanting to be, yeah. you know, be that, right? And, and you know, try to be a good role model and example for you, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, that's important. Like I said, it's not always easy, but it's, it's a choice, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, to answer your question... Honestly, I really can't think of. I'm like, wow, like, do I really? Yeah, because I asked that question because, like, oh, obviously, I, me growing up, like, I'm, I'm like the second coming to you. Like, I'm exactly your product as father, and like, I was, I think I was raised super well because of you. And I'm like, where did that come from? Well, I appreciate that. Like yeah. I said, um, like I said, I, well, I wish I had some great answer that would be. Yeah. You no, know, this maybe, is a great. That answer. would be a sound bite. Go ahead. Because there's, because you know, there's cool. so there's way more people that grew up without a good. All oh, the role models, yes. the people who did. So Especially. you're in the uh, definitely in the, uh, but it, it's the majority, a, not the minority. Yeah, it, it, but it's it's not just a choice, right? Yeah. Um, like I said, I I wanted to be a good dad. Like I said, and you know I was 28, 29 mm-hmm. when you were born, so I wasn't eighteen and nineteen. So maybe, but even at eighteen and nineteen, I still wanted to be. You know, I thought I was going to be a father. I wanted to be a good father at that point mm-hmm. if that would have happened for me. So, um, but yeah, that it's it's 
It's a choice. It's patience, right? And hey, man, there is no greater calling in this world, period. I don't care what anybody says and being a father. Yeah, it's so important. Because you're talking about generations. Mm -hmm. I can affect positively generations or negatively generations, but by my, my, what I do with modeling for you and how I pour into you, and that doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, mm -hmm. but chances improve that you will go with your kids. Drastic mm -hmm. kids all the way down that, you know, it's like uh, people talk about legacies and things like that, right? Yeah. So you so, say that's so what, like, what do you think that, uh, like the biggest struggle is for fathers, like what do you think is hard? Is it like um, just managing the kids' emotions? Or if, like, we, if we're just talking about to children, because right, that's not really just, a, it's not a singular question, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. If your father, now am I, you know, am I, you know, there's a lot of men that aren't, you know, that are baby daddies, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in my case, you know, married, right? Mm -hmm. You still gotta deal with you being a husband, you know, and being a father, but also being a provider and things like yeah. that. So sometimes the hardest thing to do is, is, and that's an interesting question, you put it that way, because as a father, wow, um, except in the fact earlier that you don't know everything, mm -hmm. you're not going to have all the answers. Yeah. And sometimes the hardest thing is, is um, knowing when to pull back, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you know you got to be willing to sacrifice, right? Put the time in you don't want to. But you know that's kind of the basic stuff that you know, as a parent. Okay, well yeah, I'm gonna make sure you got food. If you're a good father, and some dudes yeah, are yeah. just you know trash, you know whatever. But if you care and it matters to you, right? It's not just the basics. Mm -hmm. It's hey man, you know I'm trying to. Sit it's kind of like um, you know that movie Fences with Denzel Washington. Yes. Yeah, how uh, his character he was literally just a provider and he didn't think he had to do anything more than that. But unfortunately, well, you think he was taught. Now, in his mind, that was probably separate from what his father taught him. Yeah, exactly. Didn't think about that, right? So, hey, so I'm doing well by you. You got this, you got this. He's, he would probably say, if you really looked at it from an expository point, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. But I'm giving you that, right? Yeah, exactly. So the goal is, for us, is to make life a little bit better and to push you forward for the next, yeah. hey, I got to this point, so I want you to, to you know, extend to this level right there. But, um, you know, a lot of times it's, it's teaching you, being a good mom, teaching you one how to respect yourself, how to respect women for sure, yes. right? Because that's going to be important. Mm -hmm. And many times people will say, well, you know, you grew up, I'll never be that guy. Yeah, I made exactly. some mistakes. You know, I made mistakes. Go, well, well, my dad did this and did this. I'm never going to do that. You sure? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You can end up doing it. So it's good and positive role modeling that you see with that, right? And even though we think y'all are not watching, you're always watching. Always, yeah. Same thing with, you know, with, with me as, as, as growing up. My dad, oh, no, dad, I saw that. You didn't yeah. think I saw that, Dad? I heard that. Mm -hmm. No, I heard this. I heard that. Right? So those things. Um, yeah. But that's a... There's not one hard thing. You know, um, the hardest thing, and it's not the hardest thing. Yeah. But it's it's being consistent. Yeah. And being there. Right? If I if I know, if you know every day, hey, my dad says this all the time. I, I kind of have... Because if I give you a good structure then you kind of know how to grow, right? It's like, you ever see, sometimes they grow plants in pots. Mm -hmm. At first, if you watch, sometimes they would tie a little string to it because they want the tree to go grow up straight. Yeah, the stick Sometimes, tree. right? Yeah. So, because otherwise, the, the, the tree's going to go where the sun is. Exactly, yeah. Right? Where the, so, think about that with us. A lot of times, kids, that's why it's careful for us parents to pay attention to watch what you guys because you're going to grow where your stimulation is. Mm -hmm. Right, wrong, and different, Right. So as parents, it's, it's part of our responsibility, especially as a father. It's like, hey, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. Come this way. Kid, right. Yeah, let me let me guide you here. I need you to kind of go straight. Doesn't mean you're gonna be straight ninety degrees, yeah, exactly. but you know, on on a, on a straight path, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what's important about that, um, because as fathers, especially as fathers, especially of men, but as women too, right? We're accountable. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm responsible, I may not be responsible for everything you do up until eighteen. Right. But I'm accountable. Now, on a on a basic sense is, well, you know, once if the cop comes and knocks on the door, they're not looking for you. Yeah, exactly. They're looking for me. Right. No matter what you do. So I'm accountable regardless. But that's also in school. That's also in how you act with other people. Mm -hmm. Right? It's important. Accountability is important. That's one of the things as a father, you know, you trying to teach that is, is kinda hard. Yeah. Also, uh I've been thinking about this uh this video like a week leading up to it, and I was I was thinking like how much praise like I think stepfathers should have more than real fathers because stepfathers like when yeah. you step into a situation yeah. and then 
you're a burden, not burden, but you have the obligation to be a father. And that's different from just having a kid and like leaving, for instance, you know what I mean? Because yes, uh... that's a commitment you make for the rest of your life is being a stepfather. And those people like that, are, they just need more praise, I feel like. They right. just get a lot of hate, it seems, because like, people don't like the stepdads, but the good ones, <laughs> they, they, well, need, I, 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 like they need their flowers. I, I appreciate that. Been there, yeah. too. You know that. Um, that's a funny thing with that, right? Yeah, it's uh, being a step-parent is, 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 is tough. Yeah. And you hope that, that you know, <laughs> the woman is very special that you hope that that's the case. Um, but there's also a good opportunity, too, right? Mm-hmm. Because... What if the child, the child, or children don't have that, don't don't have that that male figure? Yeah. So you can step in, and a lot of times it's about stepping in the gap and, and you know being there for them and raising them. So you can have a positive impact on that as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it has its own challenges. Um, but if if the two the two parents or parent, mother or father and step parent, because they go both ways, if they're united, they're on the same page, the same message, then you know. Because children will fall in line over time, right? Really, they want to know they're going to be kicking and fighting and fussing maybe the first year or two. Mm-hmm. But if you're consistent, go back to that word again, over time, they're going to realize, oh, well, maybe he really does care. Yeah. Or maybe she really does want to know about me. Maybe she's really interested. Hey, he picks me up. She picks me up. All of these things that go with that. And so one of the hardest parts about being a parent, and it's not hard, but it's being consistent and being there. Because mm-hmm. it's not easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, hey, I would give, not that I want to brag that I am one, but I would give step parents some metal because I grew up, right? Yeah. Remember, like I said, you know, um, you never, you met him maybe once, right? I don't know if you met who, him. Who? You don't know if Your you met him. never met Yeah, him. okay, yeah, but he had a great opportunity because I remember when we were kids, my dad wasn't around. All we wanted, I was 10 mm-hmm. or 11, right? I was so excited to meet dude. Not to meet dude, but it was like, okay, with my mom moved us in, all right, cool, we here. Maybe this guy can be my dad. Yeah didn't work out that way but that was his choice it wasn't that I was a bad child right but you know so yeah it's it's uh yeah step parents are uh it's a uh, yeah you get a merit badge if you yeah you need it. I need they need more flowers because I mean all you hear is stories about like people how they didn't like their stepdad which is I mean well some aren't great you know what I mean because like they didn't sign up for this per se they just want to be with the woman but the stepdads that do fill in the role like properly they yeah their flowers more and then so the father and son relationship in particular, <laughs> okay, like not just the daughter or the, the um, man of the house, okay. but it's, I don't know how to put it in the words, but like, I mean, it means a lot to me, uh-huh, my okay. relationship with you okay. is like at the top of the list. Okay. And then, so I, I want to ask you, what does it like mean to you, just the father and the son relationship and how that, you know? Um, I think it's, it's, it's uh, vital and it's extremely important. It's. Think about it. A man gives a son his last name. Yeah, exactly. So your legacy goes. But also, it's teaching you to be the backbone of your family, right? It's yeah. the next, hey, this is kind of what that is. And, you know, even going back to the biblical times, about, you know, right, the mother would raise the child maybe for the first three to four to five years. After that, that boy, he went with the father. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So the men raised the children back then. Yeah. The child, especially the males, they raised the males. Not that the mom wasn't around, but there were certain things that, hey, because I can only teach you how to be a man. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, everybody says, well, listen, let's be honest about it. That's how that works. I don't yeah. see Billy goats teaching horses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, you don't see that. Or donkeys teaching So why are you going to, you know, I, I, you know, I, I can't, there's certain things that, because there are going to be certain things that you're going to encounter, yeah. deal with it. I can say, hey, son. Yeah, exactly. This is what this is. I know what this is. You know, you and I, you know, we talked, we got into it not that long ago, right? Yeah. Exactly. But it's just like, listen. You know, I want you to be an honorable guy, and it's like certain things, and I mean it when I say, "Hey, man, life's about relationships." You know, I got the gray hairs and the, and the scars to prove it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it's about that. But you know, the the father son relationship is so it's huge. Man. It's it's, it's huge. Man. That's I mean, yeah, it's almost like systemic. Like when when men don't have father at home, it's a, the numbers say that. Yeah, right? you know, it's um, at least more death. It's not. Yeah, so 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 peep this, right? So they say that, and I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but I've read a while back that up until maybe World War Two, that especially for in our community, that you had mother and father in the home of like eighty percent of homes. Yeah, think about that. Eighty percent, seventy eighty percent of homes. Think about that. Mother and two parents. Yes. Household. So mother and father. So think about that. So what do you have? You're promoting stability. You're promoting. Um, family yeah and, and all those things up until now 
after the Vietnam War, that number was like in half. Dang. So, dang, yeah. So, from the Vietnam War, next generation, you know what you get? Crack and all the babies. So, baby boomers. You get, you get fathers coming home from the war, um, you know, seeing things that no one should see. Yeah, no. War is terrible. They're probably, unfortunately, probably on a lot of drugs to cope and dealing with things, having their own stresses. Well, those guys aren't coming back to be prepared to be fathers. Yeah, They're mentally exactly. just not there, right? So now you've got absentee fathers. Remember, this is all a cycle. So now yeah. you've got no fathers in the 70s and 80s. Then that's my generation. Yeah. Exactly. And if I'm not there, I mean, it just... It just yeah, it and then it right? just... So a lot, they say a lot of societies um, end up failing or they struggle when men aren't in the homes. And I'm a believer in that. Right, yeah. that's me. I believe it's that. not even a belief. It's like climate change. It's a well, proven fact. I, agree, I think so. But you're gonna have some people in society that say, "Well, no, it's different." We can look. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in two parent homes. I believe it takes a male and a female to raise a family. Mm-hmm. That's my belief. Take with that what you will. This is your channel. I respect this. Is, mm-hmm. This is my belief. No, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you know, I, and I, I, I sincerely believe that, and so. You know, you can you can you can pretend all you want, yeah. but in fact, at, at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. Right? Yeah. And so, for me, it's it's vital for me to pour all that I can into you. Yeah. And then for the next generation. Yeah. And then it's also true that like you can still not have a father, you can still be like extremely successful. Or oh yeah, there's it, many of the celebrities that have deadbeat fathers that no, are fathers it, now. It, it's not saying that you can't. Right? Yeah. But um, it's just saying. It's just hard. It's just harder to grow. Thank you. Yeah. So the odds are, it's harder. Yeah. You're right. You're going to, and, and there's sometimes, your brother's called me. Because <laughs> I like it. But um, a lot of times what happens is, is that there, there could be trauma of things. A lot of times we may go through things because dad wasn't there. We may have our own internal struggles mm-hmm. that we deal with in our early 20s. Right. That we don't think about, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you won't be successful. The road may be a little harder. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. It may be a little harder. And people say, well, I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. Okay. And then let's flip that on his head and look at the reverse oh. angle. So, like, what do you think the opposite a father to a daughter, which I think is probably even more important than the son? Oh, man. Well, right? So, they say that that a lot of times, the old adage is, right, girls date their father. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, what if the father wasn't there? Yeah, then. Or what if he was there, but he's abusive? Mm-hmm. Verbally and emotionally, that girl grows up and thinks that that's love. Mm-hmm. You hear how many girls you hear even now? I heard, this, oh man, you soft. I need a, I need a dude that's hard. Yeah, you know how to exactly. handle me, handle you. Yeah. And a lot of times, women don't know, understand what love is. They have this warped sense of, well, I think that's love because he talks more, but they can't go back and refer to, oh, well, wait a minute, because that's how it's right. No, that's not healthy. Yeah, exactly. And just because I'm not calling you everything, you know, in the garden. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm soft. Mm-hmm. It means that I respect you and I love you, right? But if you're not used to that, right? Because how does a girl know? What did I used to tell your sisters all the time? Do you mm-hmm. remember? Uh, say like the first word. Say like the first word. What I would tell them? No, like when you tell them so I could guess what you would say. Oh, you know, when they would talk about dating, what would I tell them? I don't know. Okay, you can ask them. I would say, hey, don't just bring anything to the house. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would say, you know, so well, I'm, I said, I don't care about you. Yeah, I remember you talking about like, yeah, know your worth. That's not your worth. worth. Know your worth. And and it's like, if you're going to bring a guy to, see, dating is fine. You want to talk, y'all, oh, y'all talk on the phone. But if you bring a guy to the house, I got to have a conversation because what is this guy about? Mm-hmm. Right? We shouldn't, you and I both, we was like, check him out. Yeah, exactly. you know, we, we, we should do this. That's important. Their worth is important. Remember when we talked about we go to try to have those Sunday dinners? We go out and get yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, well, why, you know why I would do that? I told you. Remember? Do you remember? Uh-huh. Why? Because the thing is, I'm gonna date you and take you out. Right? Are we gonna go? Because I don't want some oh, yeah, yeah, guy yeah. coming, some knucklehead coming. We'll go. I took you out to a hamburger. You know, hamburger. You know, uh, egg McMuffin. <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, I love him. And you throw in your body? No, no. Knowing your worth, knowing that that's not impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want you to be impressed by that. So what it boils down to is, is we set the standard. Mm-hmm. So we set the standard for our daughters because if I treated your sisters well, I treat Ava well. When the next guy comes, it goes, well, Dad, don't impress me. Mm-hmm. This is what the standard yeah, is. Exactly. This is. This is who you have to be, mm-hmm. right? And you, you and I talk about what we talk about women, right? Yeah. Girls, it's like, yo, this is, hey, so the excuse me, you know, wait a minute, sorry about that. You know, well, hey, this is, this is, 
this is my standard. This mm-hmm. is where I'm at. And it's okay that. And for girls especially, if if a girl grows up and a father loves her and dotes on her and says, I love you, and they feel that sense of self-love, so they're not out there putting themselves Yeah, out exactly, there. seeking it. Uh, they're not, it's, yeah, it's because of low self-esteem and low self-worth. Yeah. So they go, I would rather a girl be, some people may call her stuck up. Yeah. Or just, yeah, exactly. And is she really? She may be a little overconfident. Mm-hmm. Or she just may be secure in self, but because other other guys are not used to that, oh, man, she's stuck up. No. Mm-hmm. She just said, you got to come correct. Yeah, you can't exactly. come with that, 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 that ABC, you know, yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. game. You, know? <laughs> you got to come, you know, talk to me about real stuff. That yeah. stuff, you, you know, talked about before, you know, really stimulate my mind. Hey, this is what I'm about. Now, mm-hmm. I, don't need, I, don't need, I don't need you to show me your, your car collection. Right. Yeah, I don't need your jewelry. Yeah. No, no. I got all that. Tell me about you, about substance. What, where does that come from? We point to our daughters about it. Yeah. Hey, this is this is what a man should say. If he says this, keep walking. Yeah, that's funny you said it because that's numero uno when I look at a woman is stuff is uh, substance. Yes, that's and, what uh, that, that's what's gonna matter. Yeah. right. That's what character matters. You know that beautiful woman upstairs. Oh shoot, sorry. About you that. did, yeah. Um, honestly, I've never been happier, and that woman has more character and substance than anyone I've ever met. Mm-hmm. You know, and if I'd have met her twenty years ago, I would have married her. Yeah, I see it. It's real talk. Um, so it when you know, you know. But that was also a growth step for her to get to that point in some cases. But she had good modeling. It wasn't necessarily parents. It could be aunts, uncles. But someone was there to show you, hey, this is what this is. But um, like I said, for you, oh, just to answer your question, oh, man, um, fathers are, 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 I don't want to say everything, but they're vital. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, um we teach our sons how to be men. Hopefully, we model that. But we also teach our daughters what men, what a man should look like. Yeah, what, exactly. what does he look like? What is, you know, the smell test? What is he about, right? Doesn't mean he's perfect. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, if I could help you get rid of some of the riffraff, yeah, exactly. make life a little bit easier. I, f- I think it every. I think it's 98% yeah. of, because uh, I feel like everything could be, Every like problem, problem or like trauma people have can be traced back to childhood. Yes, and like that's the earliest. In a lot of ways, it. yeah, a lot so, of childhood trauma. Whether it's, yes, I yeah, agree. and then if the father is absent, that just that's just poor fertilizer on like the trauma or the problem people have. It too. just makes it harder because a lot of some young young ladies will be trying to seek that in other men. Yeah, exactly, and it's not their fault. I mean, they don't. I mean, it's not the fault at all. No, but I will say this: but once you realize it, yeah, once you recognize it and go, oh wait a minute. That's a thing. Then it's your I'm a big, to Yeah. Yes. Then you're, then you're accountable for yeah. that, right? I'm a big proponent of therapy because sometimes you don't know until you know. Just like Christianity, people say, well, well, God says, I'm not going to hold you accountable. If you didn't know about me, mm-hmm. I can't hold you for what yeah, you did exactly. before that. But once you know about me, yeah, then you accept different. me. Clock starts. That was real. It is different. Exactly. What else you got? And then, so when you were uh, growing up mm-hmm. as a father, right, like, um, obviously when you uh, took in my sisters and then when I was uh, like and my mom like my mom's pregnant and stuff was there anything like you were worried that you couldn't provide as a father like is there anything like uh, maybe I couldn't give her that uh, advice that I wanted to because I've lived into or experienced it or to your mom or no like at, like raising kids was there anything you couldn't provide per se no, that you wish you, know, you could have look, looking back no I, I felt like I had a good grasp right yeah um, I thought that even I didn't, you were my first child, right? Biological, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Even with your sisters, I thought that because I was a stepchild and seeing certain things, it's like I thought being consistent was important. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, just being there every dog on day. You know what I mean? Just knowing yeah. that, hey, man, he's there. Um, trying to do things like we did high low, you know, we, we tried to have dinner at the table, remember kitchen details, all sorts of things mm-hmm. to try to implement certain things like that. But um, was that fear? Well, yeah, because you deal with baby daddy sometimes. So, you know, I'm just saying, there's always going to be some trepidations. Like, okay, well, hopefully I got no issues with these yeah, jokes exactly. over here and this and that. And you can also come to a situation where, you know, if girls have fathers in their lives, or if you're a step parent, that child could kind of like you today, hate you tomorrow. Yeah, like yeah, you today, yeah. hate you tomorrow. Well, you ain't do what I want you to do, Dennis. Well, I'm going to go to my mama. I'm going to go around you. It's yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah. of, it's, it's a minefield, right? But, you know, hopefully you play the long game. If yeah. that's the case. But, um, I didn't have a fear of, of providing. Yeah. Um, the concern was for me, and it wasn't initially it wasn't a concern, but over time it was just that as they as they age, you know, you be consistent. 
But I mean, look, over, over a while, you know, your sister was calling, they were, y'all were calling, they were calling me dad and all that stuff. So I mean, that, that was, I mean, that was yeah. cool and all of that. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, uh, well, not lastly, but to add on to that, like, um, I have a pretty larry question. This is a question I thought about like a while ago, and I want to hear your opinion on it. So, okay, do you think that good people, or do you think bad people could make good parents? Or do you think you need both? Okay, so that's a good question, right? So it's your it determines what your definition of bad is, right? You can have bank robbers that are good parents. Mm-hmm. They just rob banks. Yeah, to provide, in a sense. You know, maybe, yeah. even if they don't, they end up providing it. That may be because they like to rob banks. Yeah, that's why you say that, because that makes their reminds me of Breaking Bad. But they can be good parents, right? Like, you know what I mean? They can be, I'm still a good parent. I just do, you know, so sometimes people can, you can separate. Some people can be good parents and still be deviants. Yeah, exactly. Or be you know, rule breakers. I mean, you know, I mean, the mafia. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you get guys that are in the life and they may say they make great parents and half the time the kids, but I know that there's even in that, in the exactly. life. You know what I mean? He goes to all my games. He supports me. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, bad people can make good parents. It just yeah. depends on, I don't know the level of bad we're yeah, talking exactly. about. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, that's funny. No, I don't know. Yeah. But I was like breaking bad. Yeah. Because you know, Walter White, yeah. he slangs. Well, he started <laughs> off. Yeah, well, I'm the kind of guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Head, like I like being. You know, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, I like it. Yeah. But like he started off providing, and I'll say he's a good parent for that. But obviously, the other side, because if, if you're gonna provide for your family or for your kids by any means necessary, I think it makes you a good parent. Yeah. But you don't have to just be a good person. Because sometimes it's suggests what 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 I may consider bad. You may say, Nah, he's straight. Man. Yeah, exactly, because, exactly. Hey, man, we in the, you know you ask some people in the streets, and they go, Man, look, it's we struggling out here. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not gonna judge. No, nah, man, if you gotta do what you gotta do. I gotta provide my family. Go let them starve. Yeah, it's like, you know, yeah that's you know, the last break, thing. Break. You know what I mean? Because there's a bunch of men that will break the law before seeing yeah. their family and, starve. And are they really wrong for doing that? Yeah, if you say that, I got it's it's plenty of guys right now that are that are are, are, are may have had a felony, and it may not be a major thing, you know, but a felony, no, still, and they have a hard time getting work for yeah. years. And I mean, people will hold it against them. It's like, what are they supposed to do? And it leads to a lot of recid- recidivism. You see. Guys mm-hmm. going back to prison, they get frustrated. Man, I'm yeah. trying to do right. I'm trying to do right. And y'all, you know, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. can't either. You know what I'm saying? Either. So again, it's it's whatever your definition of bad is. It's subjective because what is your definition of bad may not be mine, and also vice versa. What your definition of good is may not be mine, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. So some people say, "Man, you're a great parent." You know, think about this. You get some people like that are from small towns or whatever. Certain people think that it's okay for them. They say, "Man, I drink." But I, I don't mind my son drinking as long as he drinks at home with me. Yeah. He's 12. Exactly, yeah. He's 14. And then what's that going to turn into? You know what I mean? Because once you start doing it then, well, when you come 18, 19, you're, you're, they'd be full-blown alcoholics, but it's okay because he learned at home. What? Mm-hmm. But in his mind, he's a good parent because yes. his kid's not there. He's not drinking out there and doing crazy inside out there in, in the streets with these people. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's another thing, too, is that there's no – Handbook or menu, you no, know, have a kid. Man, there's not. So definitions could be warped, yes, or they could be right. You know what I mean? And based on your experience, yeah, what you grew up, right? You consider what's right or mindset. Exactly. It's yeah. all subjective. It's a good question, right? But it, it's really subjective, and kind of what you and how you were raised. So some people say, "Well, I was raised Catholic, so I believe this." I'm raised Christian. I believe this. Am I wrong? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or does this make me good or any less? You know, it just depends. You know. Exactly, exactly. Society says that, okay, um, you have certain things are put in place by Western society. That mean it's true. Some people we get mad at Eastern society of uh, the full world. And think about it. Western society has been around, what, since 13, 12, 1300s? Mm-hmm. You know, young. But you've got Middle Eastern countries and Africa have been around for thousands, China, yeah, exactly, thousands exactly. of years, right? I mean, you know, uh, we can go into that, but we want to go into that tangent right now. But I mean, as far as what's considered traditional what's not it's interesting just to say it that way let's let's say like god forbid i don't want one now but if i was having a kid right now what would be some like advice to uh me if i was having a kid right now like what should i know that you already know from your journey as a father what would you tell me to help me well don't worry about sleep because that word is gone if you care right you're not gonna sleep good for i think until skyler came i was like oh good after 18 years yeah. let's go sleep again not so much yeah okay. but um I would hope and pray um, that you're just going to be that kid's father no matter what. Yeah. Period. Right? And, you know, we, you and I have had conversations about this before. 
that you know if it's yours, there is no, you know, it's on you. Mm-hmm. And it's your job to um, be in that child's life, whether their mom wants you to be in that child. Hopefully, hopefully you chose right. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but I mean, life happens. I'm not going to yeah exactly. what it is. But know that, you know, it's not something to be played with and you've been given a gift and, you know, you need to, you need to own that. And patience. Yeah. Patience. Um, hmm. patience, <laughs> understanding, um, and it's okay to know that you're not going to have all the answers. Yeah. And, you know, I try, sometimes I try to say, well, son, I don't know, but, um, at least you can try to find out, right? Um, and, and trying to be honest with you guys. I try to be honest with you about stuff. Say, hey, man, hey, this is, this is where I'm at, or this is, this is what it is, and this is what I did, and this is what I didn't do. Yeah. Now, not when they're young, of course, you know, but as a, because, the relationship changes as you get older. Our relationship changes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're going to get to a point where you're going to have your own mind, your own thoughts. And, you know, you don't stop being a parent just because you turn 18. Yeah. It, 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 it don't happen that way. Um, and then, but, you know, you just, you just have to know, and know that when you have a child, it's not about you no more. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. That's funny. I saw some stuff online about that. Like, it's not. It's not a good idea. But if, if you were to have a kid, like immediately, it will put this pressure on you to like get up and want to do what you have to do. Because some people are like living their life endlessly. It's not a good idea. I don't recommend it. But I've heard stories about people having a child and then their life changes. Like they start. Oh, it should. It yeah, happens. the pressure um, just like okay, everything changes now. You may have dreams and say, "Well, I was yeah." You know, you got to start. Gonna do it. It's yeah. like, well, I can, but now I got to. I got yeah, to make a home. I got to play and be it. Cause I got a baby. That's why I, we joked about, hey, late twenties, early thirties, give you a chance to get out and kind of experience things. Life happens, mm-hmm. but just know that when it does, it doesn't mean your life's over. It's just mm-hmm. okay. Now I gotta get creative. Or guess what? When I can, I can't live up and chill. I'm like, do you think I like working out of state all those times? Yeah, that wasn't yeah. fun for me. Crazy, you know. Um, you know, it, I could be. Trust me, I'm low maintenance. I can maybe do a lot of smaller things. We had cars, houses, yeah. out of. Uh, but, yeah, let's get some context. So, <laughs> okay, back in the day, this was like, I like six years ago, or anyway, okay, like maybe I would we'll say six years ago. Okay, there was one time where my dad was working out of um out of state. Out yeah, of city. I worked out of state. Out of state, three different times, I think. And he was working, and then he would come home every week, and then it turned into every other weekend, and then I mean, it become less and less. And then my dad was working, providing for the family, uh, like a million miles away. Um, in our apartment alone, and I mean, thinking I didn't really grasp it because I was super young, right? And I was just thinking about me at the time. Yeah. But then I look back on that and like, especially with driving now, and like, <laughs> like, because he made that sixteen-hour drive or eighteen-hour oh, drive, yeah, yeah, yeah. And driving yeah. now, I like, I kind of had more of a grasp of like, wow, that's crazy. And then like, especially like, I know it's like to like be alone and stuff like that. Yeah. So being alone with Ryan and family and being that far, and it's cold, and then like some places yeah. it, was yeah, it was cold. So I mean, I mean, I don't. Cold. I don't know how much appreciation that you received, but I mean, you should see more because, like, I totally understand. Like, I understand like the sacrifice you made. I just, I just thought like, oh, this is what dad, this is all dads do, all dads do, right? Because that's all I knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, like, I, I mean, you see like other dads and like other dads do, and you like, wow, like and he didn't. That's crazy. He did that. But yeah. Anyway, back to what you're saying, like. Um, but that's again. But yeah, you know, hey, fatherhood, right? Yeah, you know, that's, that's a fine print. That's what it comes down to. If I got a wife and kids or a family, and you know. I didn't want to go up there in some cases, but yeah. hey, this is this is and yeah, it was some, uh yeah, it was some, it was some lonely nights, yeah, probably. a lot of lonely nights in the drive. But I mean, you know that that, that is, that's the sacrifice you make, and that's yeah, that's one thing too. If you're a real father, right, you 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 have to sacrifice. Like yeah, I said, exactly. it's not about you anymore. Uh huh. You know, so sleep, eh, mm-hmm. I don't like it. Yeah, that's optional you know, because you know, but you know, freezing your butt off and below zero temperature sometimes. Hey, man. Yeah. You know, exactly. or foregoing certain things that come that comes with that though you know when you have a child you lose the right to be selfish entirely because it's not about you anymore mm-hmm. it's about you so you know for those that uh, can can wait till the late 20s early 30s to have a child they're much more secure they're much more stable and things you have to get some of those pressures you talk about aren't there because you, you you're more prepared yeah in a sense right so you know, you know, look, I appreciate you saying that, right? Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I get it. That's crazy. I get it. I'm looking. That's crazy. And then... Yeah. Okay, so... 
Yeah, I'll get I'll get smarter as you get older. That's what's funny. Yeah, yeah. I got dumb. <laughs> yeah. I get, I, you know, yeah. Man, we get dumb when you guys hit puberty. That's yeah, for I, real. I, I, drops a hundred points. For that's so that's it's so crazy. Um, but when you, you say that, jokes, because yeah, dog. No, okay, I, yeah. I, had, I had to eat crow and nana. Same thing. Yeah, mom, you're right. Mom, you're right. Everything. Mom, you're right. Yeah. Everything just uh, like when you when you're a kid or like when you're just in high school, you're just like you know emotional. Yeah. And uh, immature, yeah. and then you and then you grow up, and then you like, I mean, you get a car, right? And then you you get a job, or yeah. and then you start paying taxes, and then you like become more close to your parents as, as far as like the life that happens all you the time. see, yeah, like the sacrifice they made, and then you feel like, wow, that I really don't do that, but they did that for me, yeah. And then so it and really you realize, okay, give me that game again, movie yeah, movie. exactly. What and and you said like, how did you do this? Advice is like, yeah. oh, you ready to listen? I tried to tell you ten years ago, yeah, but I wasn't ready then. Yeah, and then and then. Yeah, like, okay. And then also like that, and then you realize how close you you are to your parents as far as like when you get older, like when you're 18, like mm-hmm. oh okay now like I have a job, you know, like all the things I just previously said about tech and stuff. Yeah. But then you realize like you will never be able to fill the shoes. At least person, that's how I feel. Like I don't think I'll ever like. I hope to be a father like you, but like I don't think I'll like come close. Cause, you'll probably. I mean, be like, but in, like in your own way, you'll probably be better. Because like how far right now, yeah. I would I would do the same thing, you know. I would drive sixteen hours and then I would stay lonely nights, whatever it is for my family. But like you actually did it, so I'm just saying that. But, well, yeah, that's that's modeling. But you, like I said, you do what you have to do. If you love them and you say it right, it can't just be about words. Yeah, right. It can't just be about words. You know, you got to be about business. What you young people say nowadays, right? You got to stand on business. Right? Yeah, stand on so, business. Fatherhood, it, there's no greater calling, no greater calling. Yeah, I don't care what these gentlemen say in the street. You, you know, you affect lives, yeah, generations, right? So. All right, thank y'all for watching. I uh, appreciate y'all a bunch uh, for watching the whole video or skipping. I don't, I don't mind. But yeah, thank y'all so much for watching the video, and I'll see y'all next week.